Hey everyone, I'm in St. Joseph, Missouri, and this is the Glore Psychiatric Museum. It's pretty weird, it's on these old grounds, and it's a large complex of a old mental hospital. Still used, portions of it are still used for care, I think, as well as a prison. But we're gonna go inside here and check it out and see what it's all about. So it's interesting, they did their own farming here. Patients and workers did farming to supply the food for the hospital. And I don't know if that's for real or not, but it says fallout shelter. So there's all sorts of farming equipment here. And here we have some old wheelchairs. Every time I see these, I run across these in antique stores sometimes, and they just look like torture devices to me. So here we have the normal old barber chair, but then these as well. It's a barber chair right here and a shaving chair. And they weren't just normal barber and shaving chairs. If they had to, if a patient was agitated or moving all around or something was happening, they could restrain them in these and then get the shaving done or the haircut done. States here on the wall that the room to the left is the hospital physical therapy room and it was in use until 1997. So here you go. Ultraviolet spotlight for intense localized radiation. That just doesn't even sound good. Some kind of bath here that they would lay you on and dunk you down in. You can see a depiction of that in that photograph over there. I mean, maybe some physical therapy there, lifting some weights on a treadmill. It's another little bathtub there. They're doing some therapy on a hand, and so this is just for your hand. It almost looks like some sort of mixing bowl or something. I think that might be some sort of drug card or something. Items on display to the left and the right include an x-ray shield, an x-ray reader, and x-ray gloves. Wow. Wow. So that's what that is. That's pretty creepy right there. They tried doing all kinds of activities. You can see art throughout and of course they had other things besides art like this weaving. Some of the blankets like they would make here. It says 2,250 dresses were sewn a year as well as the restraints and straight jackets, curtains, and blankets. Two employees supervised as many as 40 patients. Sewing and cutting and ironing, all sorts of different materials. So this particular industry had them making different things as far as stuff for the hospital, even fishing lures and trapper keepers, I remember I had a trapper keeper. It could have came from here. The sign on the wall says there were 20 tons of laundry processed a week by employees and sometimes they were working in 100 degree temperatures and it was also patients. So throughout the museum you can see where they are doing different projects and it says that they were participating in music and art and visited museums, went camping and even built cars. And there's a lot of photographs where they are doing projects. But check out this project. It's Monte Carlo with a wood bumper on it. This was built by a patient that was here, a student. And they were all furnished by these St. Joseph merchants. Look at that. Here's another one right over here. This old Toyota truck. 
all that paint that's on there. Looks like we got the Beatles and Elvis and Kiss over there. Unbelievable interior on this Toyota. They even cut the steering wheel. Makes it almost look like a pilot or something. This is not a normal interior for a truck, especially a Toyota truck. I had one about this year, 1986. Wasn't lowered and cut up and the interior wasn't so nice, but it was a good truck. Brings back memories in a way. Yeah, and the engine was not a Toyota Supra engine in it as well. <laughs> Check out the interior on this uh, Monte Carlo. It's hard to believe that's what this is. That wood grain dash, all that plush interior, and this roof. I mean, that's it's almost indescribable here with the windshield. There's only slight parts of it that look like a Monte Carlo. Pretty interesting though. There's not even doors on this. You just have to hop over the top. Look at all the switches over there. Lots of buttons. Looks like they won quite a bit of trophies, including that large trophy over there. This is a good look at some of the eating utensils and the various kitchen equipment that were used. So they fed over 3,000 people three times a day at the St. Joseph State Hospital. So they obviously had to have big cooking vessels and mixers right over there all the various kitchen equipment that was needed. As you walk down through here, it's very quiet. I'm the only one on this level. And the tile is definitely that retro old feel. Even this tile right here. So this is the morgue. Right there. That is certainly a level of creepiness there. Hmm. My gosh. That is creepy. I'm just expecting someone to raise up at any time. I am going to scream if that happens, but... It actually has an sort of a mix of an old doctor's office smell. But the interesting thing is I used to be in human anatomy. I can see that's actually a dummy now. I used to be in human anatomy and it smells like all of the chemicals that were used. So it has a doctor's office smell slash sort of a chemical smell in here still. And then here's some headstones, which is interesting. Huh. Very strange smell in here though. Even this gown is all stained and stuff. Pretty creepy in here actually. Little sign says that this wicker furniture was made by patients here up until 1930. It's part of the occupational therapy. So check out all these contents here in this display case. There are buttons and screws and nails and safety pins, bolts, pebbles, rocks, all sorts of stuff. It says that a patient in 1929 ingested all of these objects despite vigilance on part of the nurses and attendants. She swallowed all of these and became ill and they did x-ray and it revealed all this. And there was a total of 1,446 objects removed. The, patients di the patient died during the procedure. There it is, talking about the patient right there. Look at that. 
There's an unbelievable amount of stuff. There's thimbles in there, snaps, tacks. It's crazy. I remember studying about this man in psychology back in college. And this is Phineas Gage. He was uh, using dynamite, as this is saying, to remove obstacles for the railroad in Vermont when a spark ignited the explosives driving a large steel rod through his left cheek and out the top of his head. And this is a replica of his injury. Wow. Here this is talking about experimental surgeries to make patients better and they're performing lobotomies. And these are the type of surgical tables that they would use. You can actually see them doing a lobotomy right there. And it's supposed to keep him from running away. This is saying some famous lobotomy patients here. Rosemary Kennedy, Sally Ellen Onesco, Howard Dooley. Man, check out this equipment right here. Seems to me if you were having issues and then you got put in something like this, it would make you have more issues. I would have an issue with this. This says fever therapy is what this was for. Syphilis accounted for 10% of the state hospital's patients in the 30s and the 40s, nearly 300 patients a year. And this is what they used had rows of high wattage light bulbs designed to raise the patient's body temperatures above 105 degrees. Insulin coma therapy. <laughs> Pretty interesting, the mannequins are silver. But even this old cart, a little bit of creepiness. Check out this table right there. Colonic irrigation room. And they even have a table right here. I don't even want to touch that. I'm sure it's been clean, but it looks pretty grody with all the stains on it. Here's another one right there. There's all the instruments they would use. Of course, a bedpan. They even have rectal dilators. This is an example in the hospital of hydrotherapy. And you can see how that is happening right here. Look at this old bed right here. This is the wet sheet treatment or cold pack, it says. Check out that shower up there, hydrotherapy shower. Walter Reed Hospital in DC. Restraint jacket. Different restraints that they would use here. Mittens on the hands and tying them to the chair. See one there that looks like a leather pouch she's got. I think it's that right there. So if you look at all these letters here, they're on this board. It's a series of collection of letters from a diary of a patient that was here in 1971. He was observed inserting pieces of folded paper through the slot in the back of the ward television set. And when the electrician opened it up, there were 525 letters stuffed in there. Written on various things from fellowship bulletins to Disposable glove packages, regular pieces of paper, magazine articles, mail, all sorts of stuff. It says, when does collecting become a disorder? Of course, we've all seen the TV show Hoarders. Look at this person's collection of ties. And they even weave some into the chair. And then someone else collecting all the cigarette packages. 
These are various things in this room that are used to treat the mentally ill, or at least back in the day. All these different things, old stocks, douching tub. Doesn't that look pleasant? Look at this. Now it looks more like a coffin, but it is a restraint cage. Man, don't know how any of those things work. Man cage, this is a door from the St. Louis City Poor House. It's used to treat patients that cannot pay for services. See, all these things are very strange now. That almost looks like an outhouse right there. Witchcraft, there's what they did to people that they thought were witches. Take a look at this. They would put a patient in here and the decision was his, all his, to either run forward or backward. And uh, this was supposed to satisfy his physical needs. It's basically a human gerbil. No slats to see out or anything. Bath of surprise. Reproduction. Looks like you're just up there and there's a trap door and you fall through. It says, the bath of surprise was a 17th century device for calming disturbed mental patients. The patient was dropped suddenly through the trap door into a tub of cold water. This was supposed to, through a violent shock, to break the chain of delusional ideas and perhaps create conditions of favoring the sane thinking. Well, that just added fears to them, probably. Fear of water, fear of heights. Fear of just everything falling out from underneath you. Blistering, 17th century cure for hysteria. Patients suffered severe burns from hot irons. See, he's been heating that up down there. This is a reproduction of a lunatic box, sometimes called the English booth or the coffin or the clock case. It was used during the 18th and 19th centuries the victim was placed in the device and had to remain in a standing position until he or she became calm. Wow. How do you ever get calm in something like that? Tranquilizer chair. Developed by Benjamin Rush, father of the psychiatry in the United States. Near the end of the 18th century, a disturbed patient could be strapped to the chair until he became calm. This looks like it was part of the outside of the asylum. It's really pretty good size. Kind of evil looking creepy lion on it. So they have restrooms on this floor and I'm not sure why this is here. Either you had a stressful poop or there's a waiting line for the restroom so you sit and sit on this couch for to be comfortable. It's just kind of gross. Here we have a nurse with a patient. Here's a medication tray right there. Not sure what this room was, but it had some kind of doors fastened to it. And you can see on the bottom where it was like that. And then various strange things poking out of the wall like that. And those things there and right up there might have been a surgery room though because there's an x-ray thing right there where it would display the photos or the x-rays this is an example of what they used in a chapel here but it certainly wasn't the chapel it's some sort of surgery area I think those are maybe buttons to open the door and the door being that right there. 
Check out all these old wooden rocking chairs. They would use them in various places of the hospital. You can see some of them here in the women's infirmary, state hospital number two. Rocking chair hospitals in the middle part of the 1900s, patients when not assigned to work details or therapies were expected to sit in their rocking chairs along the wall of the ward and make no demands on the staff. They, if they sat quietly and did not present problems, they were considered good patients. Wow. It's various types of rocking chairs that they've used over the years. Here you can see that kind right there used in this photograph. This is certainly some sort of surgery type area. And these are maybe observation windows into the surgery area, but you can see oxygen and nitrous oxide there. They would be using. This is just a room now with tons of old documents, deeds to the property, records, all sorts of things. Very old book there. It's hard to see in the window with the camera. But that's basically what it looks like. Tons and tons of records all over to the right, to the left, right underneath. Those are file cabinets. And then of course there's tons of areas of this that are not open. It just says staff area. Some of them are libraries or various things. Some of the artwork in here is extremely good. And then you'll see other things that you're sort of confused on it as to what it is. The one down there is almost like a jawbone with a lamp in it. You come around and look. Not sure. It's this nice big wide door right here has those little metal swing plates for it right there. This artwork is interesting. It's gravel is what that is that's been painted. And this artwork is nothing but eggshells. Here we go. Conductometer, the building you are in it housed the medical and surgical operations for the state hospital. And it says this was used to test the equipment and staff for static electricity to prevent the sparks near the operating rooms where oxygen and other gases were used. So you'd stand on this right there and then use that meter. See if you could conduct electricity, I guess. We have this old counter right here. I'm assuming that this was a nurse's station to where they could wash their hands and such. Very old sink. It's dripping actually, so the water still works. It says, what do you see up there? And they're wanting me to do these different exercises right here. This is where I think it's a nurse's station and these were windows maybe. You can still see, yeah, here we go. Operating room cooling, and then operating room power on, and the supply hand off auto, operating room exhaust. Pretty interesting, there are little tidbits left. This is an example of the St. Joseph State Hospital number two living space and what it was like beds that they would have and bedpan and rocking chair that they might have used on the female wards throughout the hospital. Not very comfortable or homely like. It says this hall tree was in the use in the female bathroom of the staff bathroom in the center building for many years. This piece undoubtedly had a marble or slate top in its original state. Here we are 
in a musical therapy area. It's not the musical therapy area, but it's an example of what all they would do for musical therapy. So everything from a record player, guitar, saxophone, piano, keyboard, bells over there in the corner, and even a drum set. This set of doors is going over to another section of the hospital area. Can't go through there. That, that, that's pretty much what the doors would have looked right here and then also over there. See if we can get a good look of the grounds here. Pretty interesting to see. curious as to what the elevator looked like. Not very good. Has an old smell in it. Kind of hospital-like, but old and musty. So this was a little different. A lot of creepiness inside there. Old smells. Some of them are bad smells in there still. But pretty interesting. If you're ever in the area, come check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. You can see part of the prison that's over there and the grounds surrounded by the chain link and the barbed wire. There's an old building over there that looks abandoned and no longer used. Busted windows and boarded up. You can see that fence, it keeps going and going down through there.